this is going to be the first episode of the series of how to um, look like how to develop in Java uh, with OSBot as well. So we'll be starting from the basics of Java, uh, including how to set up an IntelliJ IDE. Uh, the links will be in the description of all the downloads, what we do today. Uh, we're going to show you where we can get uh, the Java from as well, because it's uh, Java 8. And we're going to jump in with the basics to start off with. Uh, these videos should be no longer than 20 minutes each. Um, but if they are a bit longer, I apologise. But I'll try and make them as short as is as possible so you can go back and look. Uh, this will be time marked, so uh, you will be seeing the, the bar at the bottom uh, change. So you can easily sc uh, scroll through. Yeah, I want to see this, uh, this part rewatch it, learn, uh, but yeah, I've been doing Java since I was 12 years old, and now I'm 21, so it's been quite a long time for me, like 9 years, nearly 10 years, so quite a long time. So, what the first we're going to do is search up IntelliJ, if I can spell, I apologise for that, so IntelliJ, so it'll be by jetbrains.com. Uh, you click on the download and you click download here. Obviously, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to I'm just going to cancel that because I already have it. There, once that is downloaded, go through the setup process and I will show you how to set up your IDU to make it clean, to make it feel more comfortable with you. Then, the next step is Java um, JDK, so and it'll be eight. So it should be this uh, Oracle Java SE development kit. So you come here, and you check, uh, pick whatever compatible version you're on. So it could be on Windows. So it could either be on 64-bit or 32-bit. Uh, that's important, don't forget to check that. Also, if you're on Mac, there's a Mac edition, Linux. Uh, any edition you're on, you can get it. Don't worry. So after that's all set up, um, Obviously, you will need an account with Oracle to download it as well. So, if I click on this, click the green uh, tick box, click download, then it'll come in with a login screen. So, you enter your details, sign in, and it'll download it for you. Uh, it's that simple to set up your uh, computer. So, the next step we want to do is go into IntelliJ. So, I'm just going to load my IntelliJ up now. So, once you've installed it all, uh, you can open IntelliJ. IntelliJ is more for Java, but you can use it for a lot of things, a lot of languages as well, which is really nice. So it's just loading up now. It does take a couple of minutes to load up. Depends how quick your computer is. There, while well, this is waiting. So, uh, yeah. So once this is um, loaded, we're going to create just a normal Java project so we're going to click new project then we're going to click Java we're going to click next uh, we're going to click create con uh, command line app. so we're going to create some of a command line in the future so what we want is project name so I'm going to call this um, application uh, tutorial or that uh, shall I call it tutorial one um, and I'll just do uh, my domain, which I do own. So you put your, uh, so if you've got .com, it'll be com dot your name, or if you've got co, it'll be co dot your name. It's always the last part of the domain first, then the um, first bit last. So click finish, and it'll load up with this. Start processing for you. Then once you've got your uh, ID sorted, uh, so you can see this. Um, if you want this theme, we can go to new project, uh, not project structure, sorry, new settings. Then we're going to go to plugins. Then we're going to cl uh, click on marketplace, and it's called material. So if you just search MAT, and it'll be here. So if you paid for your uh, IntelliJ, you could get this free, 
but if you haven't, you've got uh, the light version as well, uh, which only includes a few themes. And to change this, you go to appearance, and everything will be here. Yeah, so you can change like your size and everything else. And this is taking a while for load for some reason. Also, while we've got your attention, I would like to um, to say a big shout out to Notabot, who is an OS botting uh, community uh, from Bot Manager. Absolutely excellent. I've been using it um, to do my OS bottom. So uh, the link will be in the description. At the minute, there's um, for the Bot Manager, there's a twenty percent discount going. Save more than $40 um, if you buy it now before the 2.0 comes out. Uh, really good. Uh, you can buy proxies, you've got ultimate guides, what come with the lifetime keys. You can also do monthly plan. So it's currently $32.99, it's supposed to be $39.99, so you're saving a bit there. Then this program is supposed to be $249.99, now it's $199. Uh, please, I'd recommend this if you want to get into OS Bottom especially if you want to make bot farms because it gives you so much opportunities and so much information and you get support as well to set up. It's really easy. Um, I will be doing a, probably a video on how to set it up and how to get started. So hopefully IntelliJ is loaded. No. So what I'm going to do is close this down quickly. Oh, there, there we go. So once you've sorted all your settings out in IntelliJ, what we're going to do is run through the basics of how to program in Java. So I've obviously been doing this a long time, so I'm going to tell you the best methods. I ain't going to go through like, oh, this is a, like, can do it, but you don't want to do it that way. Um, I'll probably do a bit of that once it gets more complicated, but in the first episode, I won't be doing that. Um, so we've got some variables uh, what we're going to explain what we can use to our advantage um, so let's say so I'm gonna show you how to create a comment first which are really handy so to create a comment you can either do slash slash then a single line comment this is then you can put uh, hello world um, or you can do think, yeah then you can do a slash star then star slash to close it, which IntelliJ closes it automatically for you, which is really nice. Uh, then you can do like hello, then on the new line, world, how's your day? So you can do stuff like that, it's really cool and really handy. So I'm just going to remove that because we don't need that. Um, also, we've got different types of. Um, ways to initialize variables so you've got a private which you can't access from other places only in the same class so if you want to access another file let's say from test class you weren't able to uh, because it's private but if you wanted access class you would have to make it public so I'll get into that right now uh, so public is where you can initialize a variable could be a string, could be a double, could be a long, could be an integer, could be anything. Uh, it could be a hash map, could be an array list, but you're probably thinking, oh, what are all those? Are those are all different types of data, which we are going to get into uh, very shortly. So we've got public, so we can get it from another class, uh, use that same data, so it makes it a lot easier, but I like to keep my variables private as much as possible uh, to help out with cleanness of code and don't get too cluttered because what you can do from private variables you can make them into getters and setters and I know you're going to say what are getters and setters, don't worry we're going to get into that as well very shortly uh, so we're going to make, so we're going to go through like the data sets now so the first one we're going to learn about is string so a string is where you can insert text um, into this variable so we're going to call this string as a name and we're going to equal as a variable. 
so as a string sorry so it could be so you do need these double um, quotation marks so or you could do single uh, no you can't sorry too many languages I know <laughs> uh, so you could do hello uh, let's say do mine as Brandon because that is my real name um, if you didn't know about that so we're going to use Brandon then just a little trick uh, what I'm going to teach you now if you wanted more than one string with data inside still you can literally just do um, location equals UK and you can close off that is really cool really handy to keep it in one line um, so I'm not going to use that for now because we've only got one string so the next one we're going to use as you can see I'm using private in front of them um, I'll show you some other things what you don't have to use private for and, what, and public and blah 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 we'll get into that uh, so the next one we're going to learn is integer so an integer is um, a data store where you can store numbers so you can only store I think it's up to 1 million then after 1 million you have to use a big int which is the same but for larger numbers so let's say you wanted to count up to a trillion you'd have to use a big int or if you wanted to count up to 100 you'll have to use an int or yeah integers are the best ways to lower numbers so we're going to call this as age uh, equals um, then it don't have to put quotation marks all I'm going to do is 21 so that's how you do an integer and that's what an integer is so the next one we're going to cover is um, a double so uh, I'm just going to do this to make it a bit neater uh, so a double is a number the same as an integer but you've got a decimal point so you can go to dot zero zero one two three if that makes sense probably won't, you won't be able to go that in detail because that's what a floats for and uh, uh, not floats long sorry uh, so what we're going to do here is call this money uh, and we're going to call ourselves brick so we're going to have 250.456 see uh, if I do uh, you can do actually large numbers in this never mind so uh, that's what a double does it allows you to add a decimal point because if you try to add a decimal point here it will show up an error saying um, this is required type um, integer provided double so it's requiring an integer but I'm giving it a double so to make it a lot easier then the next one we're going to use is long so a long is a long cases of decimal points um, I don't really use longs that much so I'm not 100% sure on longs but I know the a long string of numbers um, to be more uh, something like that it's like decimal points I think so we're going to call this um, seconds uh, we're going to put it like uh, no that's that's a double never mind So uh, I never use doubles at long. Uh, I'll tell you what I do. I'll, I'll bring it up for you. Uh, Java line. Because I don't really use them. Uh, so. so a long is a 64 bit number. Uh, the default size is 8. Can be percent under the sign 64 bit long. So that is your explanation you just got to whack an L on the end so there you go for 20 long so that could be 20 times 5000 and that will still do the calculations so the next one we're going to do is um, we're going to use um, a array list so array list is where you can set data 
uh, store data and go through each data as a list. So imagine if you've got a shopping list, right? And you wanted to make a list. So you'd go onto your notepad or your phone, go to notes, uh, start writing down, I need bread, I need milk, I need blah, blah, blah. So that's what a list is. It does the exact same thing, but obviously a lot easier. Right, in these V brackets, you can put anything you want. So if you had a custom class which got data, you could just put like a custom class name. But in this sense, we're using string. Uh, there, we're gonna call this list. Uh, we're gonna equal to new array list because we need to initialize the actual array list so it knows we use an array list. Um, there's multiple array lists, so you've got list, array list, and you've got some others I don't use. I think you've got tree list, um, stuff like that, but I don't use them. Um, I don't think you'll be using them in, in uh, OSBot, so we should be good for that. Uh, the next one, and the final one, is going to be a hash map. A hash map is where it takes in a key and a value. So you put in your, let's say you've got a username and a password. So the key would be your username and the value would be your password. So once you've put that information in, you can do get a hash map and say you wanted the username's password. Just by putting the username in, it'll display the password for you. Um, I will show you in an example. Uh, so we're gonna do a string. Uh, you can put anything in here again, you can put an integer, uh, as I'll show you now. Uh, you can put double, so I'm actually going to put double because we're going to do this. Uh, bank status equals new hash map. So you've got to initialize the hash map again. Um, these actually can be all finals, but we'll get into that later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, we can actually display this information by using a certain bit a uh, thing. So what we can do is Java's got something called a system inbuilt, which you can output to the console. So you can do system out print line. So printing line will be like a new brand new line. You can make lines as well. So you can do one massive print line and you can separate it on different lines. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to put name, then you can do a space. But if you want to add a string, you'll think, oh, how can I add that string? It's really simple. You just add a plus sign, then you can just do name. Uh, well, you just do this dot name. Uh, uh, it's in a static. So, okay. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna make these all statics. Uh, actually, no. What we're gonna do, is we're going to make a public static and we're going to call it a string and we're just going to contain all the information to put in there quickly uh, we're going to call this message equals then we're going to put a string so we're going to do name plus name going to do why is everything playing up on me Never mind. So I don't get why that's plugging up. It's because it's in a static. And to get that, we could just literally uh, put these as a static. So we're going to put these as static and teach you something new as well. So static is where you can um, get the information by putting it uh, by referencing just the class name. So I'll show you in just a second. Um, so what we're going to do is press Alt Insert, and it's going to call, call uh, information constructor, generator, setters, getters and setters, to string override methods, delegate methods, test copyright and generate accessor slash invokers. So we're going to click getters, and we're going to literally use Shift down arrow for all of them, and enter. So now what we can do is I thought, um, as a static, you can do main dot get age get name blah 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 but if you didn't have a static you'd have to do 
main at main equals new main. Then what you can do then is through main you can access all the data, which it won't display as, as we've got more static. So we're going to do a system out again. I apologize for that. Uh, making mistakes. Uh, so we're going to do uh, get name. Uh, we can do just get name because we're actually inside of the class uh, to make it a lot easier for you. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to do uh, age. But we're going to do it in new line. So we're going to do backslash n for new line. That's how simple it is to create a new line. You have to do it inside of a string. You can't just do it like, uh, let's say, here, because that won't work. It has to be inside of a string to register. So we're going to do age is get age. There we're going to do. Um, there we're going to do another backslash. We're going to do money. Um, there, what we're going to do here is tell them how much money he's got. So we're going to do get money. Um, so. We've done that line and we've got one uh, a couple of things to do. So we've got to put data into array list and we've got to put data into hash maps, which I am going to show you right now. So to put data inside an array list, you literally, literally do a, um, get uh, list dot add. So I'm going to put hello. Uh, actually, I'll put bread. Bread. Let's be normal. Um, so put bread, get list again, the add milk. There we then the next one. Uh, that's how easy it is to add it into a whole different race. And the next one we're gonna do is a hash map. So inside of hash map, we're gonna do uh, get bank status. As I told you earlier, we need to put a key and a value. So the key is the string. The value is the double. So we're going to put um, get name because so we can put variables inside or we can put literally strings. Uh, but my instance, I want to get name, then I want to get, um, I want to put in 2000 uh, dot zero. So that's how much money has been given. Uh, then that, that's the only account I'm going to put in for now. Then to get this information, we can do, uh, we'll add one more here. So we'll do another backslash n for new line. Uh, then we're going to do bank status. Then we're going to do get bank status dot get. Then we're going to use get name. As you can say, uh, we've got to put the key inside the get. That's what it comes up as an object. So that key could be anything you um, had it set to. So the key is here and you can see I'm putting it as a get name which is a string. Uh, can, as you can see it's a string there and it originates from a string. So that's how simple uh, Java can actually be to simplify uh, your time. Just uh, one last thing, I'm going to show you quickly what a for loop is so we can get data out of our array lists and we're going to show you a different way to get data as well so the first way we're going to do data is we're going to do system out print line and we're going to go get list dot get then we could use an integer of index so there's only an integer of one index here because we've always got to start off zero then one so bread will be zero milk will be one so i'll show you here so we're going to put zero. Then I'm going to show you the other way with a for loop to access um, the array list, so you can print them out as a list. So what we can literally do a for list is uh, literate over the whole list. So you could have a list of six hundred items, and you could just say, "I want all those six hundred printed out right now," and that will print every one, single one what's in there. Or you can even be more complicated, say you've got 600 in there, but only want 20 of them. Uh, so you could actually 
search through all of them and only print 20 up, which is really cool, which we'll get in a further date. So we're going to put as a string because we've got the array list as a string. So in this, if you've had the array list as a double, you'll have to put double here or a class name, what you've specified, and you'll have to put a class name. So we're going to put a string. Then we're going to do um, new list uh, or items. Then what we're going to do is get a list. That's all we need to do to illustrate. Then we're going to do system out dot print line item, and we'll show you. Oh, item should I say? And that will print out everything uh, what's came from the list. So are you, I bet you're figuring, how can I start this? How can I see if this all works? Well, it's really simple. All you have to do is press this, press run main, then that'll run it for you. Um, then that'll start running. Then in future reference, after you've clicked that, you can literally press this arrow up here and that'll run it for you as well. So you can see name, um, random, age, 21, money, 250.456, bank status, 2000, because we added it here. There we did the get zero, as I told you it would be mil, uh, bread. There we did the for loop, which alliterates over everything again, and that will list everything. So guys, I hope you've learned quite a bit from this. Uh, the next lesson will be more on how to program structurally, uh, how to know what to write and what method to use and stuff like that, more in-depth stuff. So this was just a beginner's guide, next will be intermediate, then the others would be advanced. So I hope you've enjoyed this, don't forget to smash that like button, the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. I will be showing you, um, I hope to see in the future, as it, uh, 1 to 99 using custom scripts only on OS Bot and using Bot in Manager. So thank you again. I hope you've had a nice lesson and I hope it weren't too complicated. And if it was too complicated, if I'm um, too, speaking too fast, just let me know in the comments. I will slow it down for you. If you've got any questions, put it in the comments. I will answer every single question you have. So thank you again and I will see you next time. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the last video. Today we are going to be covering conditions like if, else and else if statements how, and how to use them properly. We are going to be using data, what we need, uh, what we used last time to add the logic to the conditions. So as you see last time, we just added data to ArrayList, added uh, data to hash maps. So we're going to check if um, a value is equal to another value and yeah, we'll We'll jump straight into this. So if we wanted to check um, if a username is equal to, or a name is equal to a certain name, then all we could do is type in if, then we could do, uh, don't forget to close your brackets as well, uh, name, so we'll have to do get name. We could even do dot get equals. Uh, oh, never mind. equals ignore case sorry um, and then we could put random so what equals ignore case is it ignores the lowercase and capitals and tries to find the relevant words to it so it just makes it a lot easier than typing the exact same capitalized and blah 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 um, so if we get the name equals and contains we're going to do system out dot print line um, we found him. So that's the first one covered. So what we're doing is checking if the name is equal to Brandon, then we put something out. So if the name isn't equal to Brandon, we can add else to it. And else is something like a, a backup. So if the if statement uh, fails, then it'll go onto the else. So I'm just going to do system out of print line. Uh, we can't find him. Uh, let's do something like that. So that's the first line we're going to do. So we're going to test that quickly uh, by just pressing this button up here. And that'll run it. Um, so as you say, it, it says we have found him. 
So if we just change the name quickly to like test, as you see, uh, we've got a binary map. That's because we're using logical um, conditions with logical data. Uh, this is really important, uh, especially when you're handling with uh, multiple variables or things like that. So what else we can do is we can use an or. So we can say or get age. So we use those two straight lines. Uh, and we can do equals. Then or we could do equals equals uh, 20. 21, sorry. Uh, then that would do the same thing. Obviously, the date is true. Um, so, yeah, so it'll say we have found this as we are checking if Brandon, uh, if the name is equal to Brandon, then print out uh, we have found him. Or if the age is equal to 21, we have found him. But we don't want that because that's stupid, like, right? We do use it in a lot of instances, but for this instance, we wouldn't use that. We would use something called an and. So it's just literally two and signs together, and that makes an and. So now we're checking if, if play, uh, get name equals ignore case Brandon, and get age is equal to 21, then it'll say if we have found him. Else, we can't find him. So this should say if we can't find him. Uh, as you can see there, so if I put my name back to Brandon, then that'll say we have found him. Uh, like that. So what uh, we're gonna keep all the data actually. Uh, I'm just gonna move these lines quickly uh, to clean up a bit. So the next thing we're gonna uh, learn, uh, next thing I'm gonna teach you about is uh, using booleans. So we come we didn't cover booleans in the last video so we're going to just touch on them quickly so we're going to create like a little login script with a username no password so we're going to say private uh, boolean is logged in <coughs> sorry about that so if the player is logged in um, then we want to set this to true uh, if it's not then we want to say it's false so what a boolean is a uh, boolean is a variable where it can be either true or false if it's true then you can execute code if it's false then you want to fall back onto code uh, that's pretty much it in an eggshell for it so what we're going to check is um, if um, we just need to create a get uh, another getter as we sort of learned in the last video so if get is logged in so do if get logged in. That's is sorry. Uh, get logged in. Uh, I forgot to make it was static. Not put logged in. Uh, I forgot to make it static. If get logged in, then we just want to execute this code. You're thinking, why I'm not doing like, um, is get logged in equals true or false or, uh, because the reason is, um, if you just do if get logged in, that'll mean it's checking for a true statement. Uh, that's how the Java logic works. So we're checking it if get logged in is true, then we want to do. Um, system that out uh, print line you have already or you have uh, you need to get uh, logged in that's going to be easier um, else we want to say um, system out you are So now we're checking if get logged in is equal to true, then it'll say now you are logged in. Else, if it's uh, basically equal to false, then we're going to say you're, log uh, you're not logged in. 
So if we go and run this quickly, I'll show you. So as you can see, it says you're not logged in, but if I set this to true, I'll show you that the logic does work, then now it'll say you're logged in. As simple as that um, will work. So we're gonna cover these back in a minute because uh, I just want to show you something else. So um, let's say we're using a verification system right and we need to check the username um, and the um, and the username failed. So we use the H right but if we use an is if get username equals ignore case Brandon then use an else that load is C if it's uh, checking a uh, name uh, to see if it's not there basically uh, it's a full backup so the way we can actually check this we can use an if else statement so I'm going to do if get name dot equals ignore case uh, Brandon then we're going to say um, system out the print line are you ready? Him. So, are you really him? Else if. So it's really easy to else if. It's basically an if statement, but on a callback error uh, from the if statement. So if else if, then we want to do get age equals equals 21. Then system output line we have found that user by age so this will pretty much say uh, the top one first then it'll say the, uh, say the second one shortly um, no so, sorry no sorry um, it'll only show the top one but if I change my name to Brandon now uh, to text then um, that will say we have found that user by age and we could actually do some other things with that but uh, we'll get on with that in the uh, next video um, but this video is really, like really simple it's about conditions and how conditions work so we're just going to wipe all this and we're going to just say um, yeah, so we're gonna say we're gonna check if um, the, play, uh, the user is it uh, like his name is equal to a certain name. Then if he is, then we're gonna log him in. But if he's not, we're gonna say sorry, this is uh, your verification is wrong, or you can say uh, error, uh, incorrect details. So what we're gonna do if uh, get logged in. Right, so why are we using exclamation mark at the start of get back, uh, logged in? So, a get uh, exclamation mark is try basically with a boolean is saying if it's not logged in, so it's basically a not sign. So, if not get logged in, then you want to say you can log in basically. So, it's just checking if it's the value is false. false. Um, I'll show you in a bit more depth later on. So if get logged in, uh, if it's not logged in, then we can proceed with the log. So we can say if get username or get name is equal to um, Harry or not the we can just use um, this magical uh, method Harry then uh, we're going to check the age as well actually so we're going to use the and again and get age is equal to 30, 43 so if those are the two equals together so what we're going to do uh, get logged in equals true uh, oh sorry Okay, sorry. Yeah. 
out of them. If that is people today, I'm going to say system out dot printline. You have logged in space, so we can come compact the screen, so we can add a variable. So we're going to do get uh, get in. Um, so that's going to say you have logged in Harry. Uh, but if that name is not equal to that, then we want to say sorry, uh, you couldn't log in. So else um, system out the print line. Sorry, uh, you can't log in. Then that's pretty much saying if the name is equal to Harry and age is equal to forty three, then you want to set the boolean state to true. Uh, for logged in, then you want to send a message. You have logged in, Harry. So it's like a nice greeting message. Then you want to check if you those uh, if name Harry and age is not equal to forty-three. Then we want to say sorry, you can't log in because they're using incorrect information, right? So we want to check one more thing. So we've got if ain't. Uh, if the person ain't logged in, then if get name it equals Harry and the age is 43, then you want to log him in. Else, don't log him in. We can actually do something pretty cool as well. Uh, so we can check, we can say the same exact message and check if he's not logged in as well. Uh, if it's already logged in, or uh, let's do out if. So we could do if get logged in, then we want to say system out um, system out print line session already exists. So what a session is, is basically um, it's to do with web server backends uh, as I do with PHP as well uh, but that's irrelevant so we're saying if get logged in is equal to true uh, then we want to print line um, session already exists so what we're going to do is set Brandon21 and Fox to see how this actually works so what we're going to do we're just going to comment these quickly so these don't get away so to highlight all of them and comment it quickly, all you need to do is command forward slash, I mean control forward slash, then I'll automatically comment them out for you. Then to get back out of the comments, you just literally do the same, like I told you. <laughs> so we're going to run this. So as you see, it's checked here, so it's not logged in, and uh, it's checked here as well. Hmm. It's not the name, so we're saying, sorry, can't log in, which in logical, you would think that. So we're going to change um, Harry, and we're going to change it to 43. So he's 43 years old now. Uh, we're going to run this one more time. Um, see, you have logged in. We don't really want the session already exists because he's just literally logged in. So, how can we prevent that? So, what we can do instead of putting in um, here, we can um, we can literally do else here. Then we can do system out dot print line session so now if we run that one more time let's say you have logged in Harry that's pretty much what the conditions are um, there's pretty much everything within conditions itself um, if you'd like to know more uh, please join our Discord down below. Also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Notabot. He's been helping me support with those these videos and giving me the confidence to actually create these videos. Um, also, thank you for the support on the last video. We reached over 200 views within 
the first 24 hours, which is absolutely incredible. And if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button and like button. So our like goal is going to be 10. So if we hit 10 likes, I will create a script and publish it for free for you on our Discord. So if you would like that, join our Discord and I will um, check on the likes. Then if those likes smash it, then we'll definitely uh, create a script for you uh, to use for your, at our spot. And the next video, we are actually going to dive into uh, using Ozbot and how to set it up um, API, which will be really nice. So thank you again. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, like button, comment section for any answers or questions. Uh, Discord will answer all your questions for you as well. So yeah, and I will catch you later. Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your first ever script in Ozbot. So we're going to start by showing you how to add the Ozbot API to your IDE and move on to creating the script. So what we're going to do is create a new project. Uh, there what we're going to do is just create a new Java project, just click next. Uh, so if you didn't see that, so Java then just like click this bit here, next, then next again. So I'm going to create this uh, wood cutting script. Uh, so I'm going to call this wood chopper script, as that's what it's going to be. Uh, so once that's um, done, you click finish, and that'll create the script for you. So what I like to do is organize my uh, files. So I'm just going to create a package called calm, uh, oh, dev, sorry, because that's my domain. Then create another one called Brandon D. Then create a new one called the project. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call this chopper um, script, or just chopper. So, um, hope you've enjoyed the last videos what I created. If you haven't watched them, uh, I would suggest uh, starting from number one, uh, then working your way through as it shows you how to, like it teaches you Java, the basics of Java to get started with a script. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to File, Project Structure, uh, Modules, uh, Library, sorry, then click on Java. So this is where you find your Oz, uh, Ozbot jar. So mine's in my desktop. Uh, so I'll go to C, users, name, then find desktop here. Then go to your file where it's located. And it's literally the same one you uh, open your Ozbot client up with, the APIs inside of there which is really nice, then you click OK, then after that click Apply. What else we're going to do is teach you how to build the project as well. So we're going to click Jar, Empty. So we're going to call this, um, I'm going to call this Chopper Script. Uh, so once that's done, uh, the Chopper Script, as you see, it's empty So at the minute. So what you want to do is right click, then put into Output Root. So the one where it says uh, your project name, there it should say compile out. But then after you've done that, click apply, then OK. So the first thing we're going to make is I like to call my first script the main. So the main is where uh, the code's going to start, uh, where the project's going to start as well. So what we're going to do is extend. Extend this um, as a script because that's where the Ozbot uh, script uh, recognizes it as a main instance. So we're going to implement the methods. So on loop, what I like to put is uh, 602. Um, so that's how many seconds it's going to before it's going to re loop itself. So a bit more realistic. What else we're going to need is a, the script manifest. So we need a name. So I'm going to call this um, chopper. 
there we're going to need an author. Um, author equals, I'm just going to put a uh, brand new loop. There, what else we're going to need is um, a logo. So we ain't got a logo, so we're going to call that null. Then we're going to need a version. So the version is going to be 1.0. So what else do we need? Info. So we want to know what info information we want to send through. So we're going to call this uh, word button script tutorial. Um, so that is the tutorials part. So to create a word cutting script, what we need to do is check what the nearest tree is in a certain area. So to get local areas, we can use um, a, a tool, uh, which we can go on the internet, and we can go um, Ozbot uh, Map Area. So uh, it's called Xpose uh, Map. Uh, sorry for my bad pronunciation, but it's very handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to Barak. Uh, we're going to woodcut here. Actually, uh, not there, sorry, because uh, you'll get killed there if you're low level. So we're going to do it here, around here somewhere. So what we're going to do is just create... Um, Click on this uh, rectangle, then just click that once and drag it across. So I'm going to make quite a big area here. So that tells us what our new area is. So what we're going to do is copy this. Then what we can do now is make a private area. If we just remove this area and just go A R E A. Then it's the org.osbot.rso7api.map. Then that will be imported. If you don't know how to import already, it's alt enter. And it'll tell you which one you want to import. Well, you can select so. Then you select that. Uh, we're going to call this uh, wood uh, WC area for wood cutting area. So once we've got that area, we need to check if the player is inside that area. So what we can do is we can do if get uh, no, sorry if wc area dot contains my uh, player so that's checking if the player is inside of that then we know it's there but we don't want that we want to check if it's not inside the area so we can actually uh, make it walk to the area so. To walk, what we can do is literally get walk again dot web walking. Then we can just literally do WC area. Then uh but we don't want to do it that way because we need to make it more realistic so we don't get banned as easy. So we're just gonna copy that and do if get walking web area at uh, web walking, sorry, in our area, then we want to do a new conditional sleep. Uh, it's the old spot rso 7utility Then we're going to put two parameters. So I like to do so, uh, like to seconds, so it's milliseconds. So 1,000 is one second, 2,000 is two seconds, 3,000 is three seconds, etc. Et so I'm going to do between 2,000 and 5,000. So that's between two and five seconds. Uh, then once we do that, we can just do the condition. So we can do, uh, so we're just going to leave that as false. And we're going to keep that asleep. So what that's going to do is going to idle itself um, until the condition turns false. So we could even like put um, WC area dot contains my player. So it returns a uh, ball loop. So we're going to put that so it looks uh, a bit neater. Then, once the player's walked inside of it, 
uh, once it's inside, we want to put an else. Then this is where we want to recognize the tree. So we're going to call this a um, RS object, uh, RS2 object as a tree equals um, get object dot process and we're going to put a tree. So we've got to keep this um, capitalized correctly, otherwise it won't find it. So what this is going to do, it's going to find the closest tree within the area. So once that's found the tree, we want to check if the tree's up north. So if tree, so we're going to do an exclamation mark and equals to make sure it's not equal to null. Um, then, so if the uh, tree's not equal to null, then it'll chop it. But we want to check if our play is not animating as well. So if um, my player that is animating, then you want to interact with the tree. So what you want to do is tree dot interact. Then we want to do the action. What it tells us on the option search chop down. To check this, uh, we can literally go to this and click Osbot tree action. Um, so simple action. And it'll say chop down. So I actually made an error, it's the lowercase d. So we've got to make sure this is all correct. As you can see here, it says um, chop down. So we're going to do uh, another thing. So um, we're going to do get mouse dot move outside screen. So it looks like uh, we're not always tapping that screen, if that makes sense. Then what we're going to do is going to do a sleep of a random. So these are two numbers between uh, seconds again, which is in milliseconds, so which we can do. 2,000, 5,000 seconds, uh, so not seconds, milliseconds. So that's two to five seconds of waiting. So we can secure, um, so it doesn't look like we're actually botted. So uh, we've got that so far. So that is to interact with the actual tree itself. And yeah, so, uh, we're going to add a bit more to it uh, to make it look a bit cool, uh, make it work better. So I'm going to show you how to build this now. So this first video is just getting used to the API. I will send a link in the description where the API is. Uh, so how to build. So you want to click build, build artifacts, then click the build. Then that will just build it. Then it'll show a bar down here, build in. Okay, what we're going to do is click out artifacts, your project name, and the script will be in the dot jar. What we want to do is just literally press Control C to copy it. So you want to find the folder of your scripts. So it should be in your uh, this C drive. Users, the name. Uh, then it should be under Osbot. So you click O. Then it should be. Uh, script, sorry, then you can just literally put the script here. So I'm going to show you um, what this script actually does now. So we are back into uh, Ospot now. So what you want to click is on this, and if you don't see it, click refresh. And you should see a script, whatever you called it, with your author as Brandon Lee. So what you want to click is start local. So that'll do the login process. I'll see all my information will be blurred out. Uh, so you can't see of it, any of it or steal any of it. Uh, for security reasons. So we just jumped into the um, the, uh, uh, the application and now as you can see it's actually walk into the area so to open your login just click on this little three dot menu thing and it says toggle logger 
check if we actually have any script errors. So we'll fast forward this until we get there. So it's reached the final destination now. As you can say, we've reached the. Uh, but it's frozen on me. So now it should click interact with a tree. Okay, so the, in this example, uh, I did make a slight error. So I'm just going to uh, auto correct this quickly by over into the bank. Um, so in order to actually chop down a tree, I'll see you need an axe. So, which is a small error, but we can fix that. Uh, with all that's, that's why I did it to teach you like errors. To know. Um, now, if we click on chopper script, that should take us back to the area and we should be able to interact with the trees now. So it's told us where it's final destination. Uh, we're going to wait a couple of seconds, see if it actually interacts with it. So it doesn't. Oh, uh, so I made a slight error. So we're going to put this to false. Then what we're going to do is it's not animating. So we're just going to literally do those two things. So it's the API is kind of backwards um, in my eyes because I'm used to Minecraft development. So we're gonna gonna try this again. Trial it error is always the best thing. So we're gonna click this refresh button, then find chopper, start the script, but now you can see it's interacting with the tree. But it should find enough one. Uh, one. As you can see that script was completed fine. So in the next video I'm, I am going to show you how to make it check how much is in the uh, inventory then transfer that into the bank uh, then you can sell it or fletch it later on down the line. So we're going to just do a quick recap of the code. So the script manifest uh, allows you to register the script as a name, who it's from, the version, and the information. Then what an area does is uh, checks where the location of where you want to walk to. Then that's when we can start wood, uh, chopping the trees down. Then what we did here is checking if the player is not inside the uh, area, then we want to walk to the area, then put it as a conditional sleep. A conditional sleep again is puts your code to sleep for like the amount of seconds you've inputted, which are in milliseconds. So if you ever want the seconds, it's times by a thousand. Um, so then what we've done is put an else statement 
else then we've registered the uh, tree balloon uh, object sorry uh, check where the closest is then we've checked if it's not equal to null then we've checked if the play is not animating then we're going to do tree dot interrupt then get the mouse move outside then we're going to sleep for two to five seconds again to secure ourselves with the script so hope you've enjoyed this one i know it's a short video again uh but i think it's the best bet to keep it short um don't forget to keep uh, working on your skills your java language your knowledge i will put a few helper like documents down below uh, where you can learn more java in more in depth if you want to do that also um take your time uh, don't rush through these videos and say, yes, I'm going to do this. I can do this. I have hope in you, but you don't want to overstress yourself. Otherwise, you're going to lose what you've been doing. Um, so take your time. Don't rush anything. Um, so what I want you to do after I've taught you this, I want you to try and change the location and cut down a different tree. So I want you to cut down an oak tree, um, then submit it, like send me a screenshot uh, of your code, send it to me on the Discord channel and I will review it and tell you where it's gone wrong or if that's correct and see what your inspirations are. Don't forget to send me your jars as well. I will look through them and see if they are good. So just keep on top of it. I will be making homework for you as well. So that little, it's a little assignment. So thank you again. Uh, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, the like button, the comment button uh, section, and get as much um, content support as possible. And uh, yeah, so thank you again, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back, everyone. Sorry, I took um, a bit of a break as I wasn't very well. And I just wanted to say thank you very much for all your support, watching the videos, um, showing the uh, support in the likes and comments. Also, I wanted to say a big thank you to Button Hook Community for helping me uh, gain this confidence uh, to create new content and to create videos on development. Um, so today we are going to rewrite uh, the woodcutting script to what I was doing last time in the last couple of videos. Uh, to make it more efficient, uh, we're going to add a banking system and an anti-ban um, system. So what the anti-ban system would do is it'll stop for like a couple of seconds and it won't spam the, um, the tree either. So it's harder to detect. Then when we walk in as well, it'll stop once it reaches its location. It'll stop for a few seconds, but it'll go straight into the bank stop for a few seconds but it'll keep doing that so it's it do it between a random amount of seconds so it looks a bit more realism uh so it's a lot harder for jagex to detect it with their macro systems and bot detections so uh we're gonna dive straight in so if you remember in the last video how we used um the uh, the x valve github map um this will still be linked in the description don't worry um if you can't remember so what we're going to do is just create a little area but that's me there we go just around the bank so we can get the bank area now so we're only going to copy up to new area because let's show you something pretty cool. So instead of writing a new private area, so what we're going to do is just literally do um, bank area equals this bank. And you've got your bank area already. So what we're going to do is going to remove all this. Then we're going to create a few voids. So I'm going to do private void chop tree. So that's going to chop the tree section. There we're going to do private void um, bank deposit. 
I messed up. Then the last one is going to be private void check item. So all these are going to have uh, quite a bit of logic in. So to make it a lot easier for us to understand, we just put them into different methods so it's not all in the loop. So, okay. So what we're going to start by doing is just going to create the sections here. So we're going to do if get inventory dot contains bronze apps. Then we're going to do check item. Else if get inventory that is full. Then we're going to um chop uh, the tree sorry so there we're going to do else uh, bank deposit so what this is doing is checking if the inventory doesn't contain the bronze axe so it's going to check the item but if it uh, does contain the axe and the inventory isn't full then it's got the chop the tree then if the inventory is full it's going to bank deposit. So, what we are going to do next is we're just going to change it to three as well. I put it 602, but it's actually 603. Um, so, we're going to add the logic inside these now. So, we've done all this before. Um, we're just rewriting it to make it a lot neater. So, yeah. So I'm going to use RS2 object as um, tree equals get objects uh, closest tree. So we're going to use it as the closest tree within the area, um, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do now if my player is not animating and tree is visible yeah, new condition sleep we're going to do between 1000 and 1500 there we're going to create a condition there we're going to log using anti -band. So this is the anti-band system, which literally is that simple for the trees. Um, then now uh, we're going to get into more. So if my player is it animating and the tree is not equal to null, so that's checking if it's actually found a tree. Then we're going to tree interact with this, so tree interact chop down make sure these actions do uh, our correct spellings otherwise it won't work so we're going to do a new conditional sleep then we're going to do between 5000 2000 and then we're going to do a condition of my play that is empty. There, we're going to dot sleep that. So we get in there quite quickly. Um, as it's not much to write out in some sense, this is small parts of coding. So I think this is a lot, then you should see what a lot is when you start getting into it more into the future. Um, as you know what we are doing uh, so we're just checking if the tree is equal to null or the um uh, we're not inside the area there we're going to do get camera so yeah so it's going to spin the camera onto the um entity which is the tree and it's going to log the message searching for tree so if 
Get walking. Dot web walk. WC area. There we go. New condition. Sleep. Five thousand. Two thousand. Bad condition of tree is visible. I'm going to sleep that as well. So, this is actually a really simple and more efficient way to actually do uh, chopping the trees down. So, as I was explaining it through the process, it's um, really efficient. It's, what it's doing here is going to check if uh, when the tree is visible, then it will return the building state of that. So, what we are going to do next is the bank deposit. So the bank deposit is really easy as well. It's not complicated, but this is something new to you and I've been doing it for about three weeks now. Uh, so I've been picking up really quick as prior to my Java knowledge. So what we're going to do is start off by checking if the place inside of the, uh, if it's not inside the area. So we're going to do if bank area that contains my position. Then if yeah, web for uh, yeah, bank area. There we're going to do condition. New conditional sleep, sorry. Between 5,000 and 250. So we're going to do condition here. Uh, we'll leave that as it is. Sleep. Then, what we're going to check for now. Else if, so this is where the bank comes in. Bang. It's not open. Bang. We want to open the bank. So bang. Not open. Bang. Else. You can spell. Bang. Deposit. Bank. Dot. Deposit. All. Except. Runs out. Uh, this is um, coming up right because it needs um, an exception, which is interrupted, interrupted exception, uh, which allows to catch the errors um, through Osbot itself. So that's pretty much the bank deposit done. So all it's doing is checking if it's in the area, go walk into the area. Then if it's in the area, then it's going to check if the bank is open. If it's not open, then if it's not open, it'll open it. And else it'll just bank all it, except the bronze axe. It's that simple. So the next method we are going to be working on is checking item. So this one is literally as simple as possible again. Um, so yeah, we're going to just jump straight into this. So if get inventory dot contains runs X, then if bank area that contains my position, then if Web walk. I keep saying that. Get walking. Dot web walk. Then what we want to do is between five thousand to fifty again. Oh, sorry. That's the ash. <laughs> so we're going to do the bank area. Then we want to do a new condition of sleep. Sorry, I'm well ahead of myself. There we want to do between 5,000 and 250. 
there. We're going to do condition. Return that as false. And we're just going to sleep that out. Um, bam. What we're going to check now is basically the same as the bank. So else if bank dot is open bank dot close uh, bank dot open sorry else bank dot plus it all there we're gonna do bank dot yeah, bank dot withdraw um runs acts one there bank dot close it's literally that simple and don't forget to add the inception for this one as well it's literally that simple to create it um so what i'm going to do now is just build this and show you if it does work so i'll see you in a second i have just logged in right now um it's going to use the antiban as you can see in the logs so then i can chop the tree down use the antiban again chop the other tree down it's going to do keep doing that um, so what I'm going to do is pause this quickly and just go to the bank and just pop to this bank here and I'm going to show you that everything does work completely fine by depositing this in and we're going to just walk out around the corner so you know it's going to the location so i'm going to start it again so it has resumed so as you can see it's going straight to the bank but it'll say we've reached the final destination and it's going to wait a few seconds open the bank up it'll grab the axe when it'll start wood quit so i will jump straight back into when the full inventory uh, is for logs then i'll show you that works as well But now that's out the area, press play and it's going straight back to the bank because it knows that we're, the inventory is full and that needs to deposit all the locks. That's proven. So that's how you create um, a really advanced uh, system and making it really simplified and where you can easily adjust it and expand your code within the knowledge so i hope you've learned something new from this video and i hope you can take this on to the next videos with you now and create even better systems so if you have any questions feel free to put them in the comments or message me on discord then uh, the next videos will be planning out very shortly i will make an announcement for them if you have any suggestions what we should do next please feel free to put them in the ideas also um i just wanted to say another thank you for your support uh, reaching over 500 views on one of my videos and nearly reaching 30 subscribers which is absolutely amazing starting from zero and uh, going all the way up to 30 within a couple of weeks so i'm uh, really appreciated for that so yeah 
hope you enjoyed this video and thank you uh, for watching again and don't forget keep keep learning keep trying keep practicing if you get stuck just message me i ain't gonna bite your head off so yeah thank you and i will see you in the next videos adios <laughs>